So welcome everyone. This is a just a brief introduction about how to use Illustrator. So I'm just going to come straight in and start it. We're going to look at a few things for a start. But very first of all is we're going to come from the file. Now when we get a new file, just come up here, watch me file new. As I open it here, now you're on Illustrator 2018. This might be off to the side over here. But we can, I've selected this here, see is it custom. So that means I can come in and change the size if I wanted a square. Um, or you can go and click the normal paper sizes. So then you can go into print and you can choose down here. See now it's changing to typical print sizes, A4, A3. You might change that. A lot of our material is A3. So you could choose that down there. Um, also up here you can go to the web as well. See this, this is the basic layouts here. So that, that's changing as well for some different web sizes as well. So there's options of the page. But it doesn't really matter and you can change that later on anyway. So I've got this page set up here. That was set for wide. I'm going to close that one down and come back to here. So this looks very ugly and that is fine. We're going to make it beautiful. I've just written a few things that I want you to focus on here. And then we'll look at some of the tools. Now first of all up the top here we have these different pop down or fold down menus. So these are the ones we're going to look at right now. We're going to look at some an object. We're going to look at type. We're not going to worry about selected effect. These are more fancy. We can use them later. We're definitely going to look at view, particularly these things here. Um, but right now in terms of window, I want to look over here. Because at any stage, if this shape in here is changing, this is really annoying for you. So you always come over here to workspace. So I've I've got it, you see down here on typography, but they can change these. So here's automation. So notice how things are changing over here to this side. Here might be another workspace um, for painting. Changing again. Notice how it's changed. So painting one is so you can move these things around a lot. Um, I'm going to go back to where I was. So I had workspace set for typography because that's what we're doing now. Typography assignments. Now, we have the zoom tool. See it down here. This is very important. Now, Illustrator has a very cool zoom tool. When you get used to Illustrator, you're not going to like any other software because it's so good. So I want to see I've got my cursor can, and I've got a bounding box over there. In 2018, again, that changes a little bit, but I'm going to zoom right in here. So here's a quick definition of Illustrator here. It's professional level software specifically designed to create vector images. Now, you won't know this word here, vector images, but I will show you what that means soon. Illustrator is an effective tool for combining images and text for a variety of visual purposes. It's professional level design tool and it is expressly used to design posters, logos, billboards and other online things. It's a layout tool as well. So layout means as we move things around. So that's the basics of what Illustrator is. Now notice me again, I'm zooming out now. Just a little clue for you, what I'm doing here is I'm holding down Alt. Notice how my is going from a plus to a minus and I can zoom out. And I'll just zoom all the way out. So I can come way out to here. Miles away, aren't I? And then I might zoom in just on everything I have here. And then I can come in and zoom just in this one here. I can also use the hand tool to move things around. But generally I don't use the hand tool much. I just use um, the zoom tool and just zoom in and out all the time I'm zooming in and out of things. So we've looked at view, we looked at zoom in and out. Oh now one other thing I'll just come back and we'll focus on view again. If we come up here with view we can come into outline view. See it's changing quite a bit. So we've got GPU preview. So this is the graphics preview and then we want to see outline. Sometimes it's a black and white outline. Now I'll show you a bit later on when we go do this thing over here. We create outlines. Then this view is important. So we've got zoom in and out. We've got pan. We've got our windows up here. So these windows that I mentioned before, we've got workspaces. But we also have a lot of different things that we might open and close at different times. We've got heaps and heaps of different windows. I like to have a line open. See this one here? A line. I'll show you why in a minute. That's very important for when we're grouping things. I'm going to use these tools here quite a lot to move things around as a layout tool. Um, the properties in 2018, you'll see the properties over here. And this 2016, they're up the top here. 
So I've got lots of things going on over here. This one here, I'm going to show you this because I'm going to take that away. Swatches, we can move these window panels away as well and around. This is very important. Here's all my colors. There are far more colors than that. If you want to, you can go and change them. You can change a color on here as well. I'll show you how to do that later. I, I don't want to focus too much on color right now because we're going to just use about text and the basic tools. So let's now have a look. So we've looked at those things there. Let's have a look at text. So if we come over here, here is our basic text tool. So we're going to click on this icon. Now there's two options. You can either see what I'm doing there is holding it down and I can type within there. Blah, 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 blah. And it will stop and immediately I want to show you this. What happens if I type too much? See this little red button here? See that? That red button means there's some hidden text. I'm going to have to pull it down and there it is. See the red button's gone away. It was showing a wee bit there. So that's one thing we can do. So you can do it like that. Or I'm just going to delete that. I can just start typing. If I just start typing here, there will be no end. It'll just come across in one big long line. See it going across the other side? You might not want that. So when you've got it, when you're doing it that way, that's really good for headings. Um, but you, you, you can't split it then. So you're going to have to come into the middle somewhere and split it yourself. But that's an important thing in design too, in terms of the type is where and how words split on a line. So that's the basics with the using the text tool there. Now in terms of some other things, so let's say we've got this text here. Um, and we've got our basic lorem ipsum. Let's do that. Lorem ipsum. We just type that in. Now I've got just Franklin Gothic Heavy. This is a basic font um, that I like to use for headings. This is in quite a lot of industry things use this basic font. Um, now if I want to change it, so there's lots of ways of changing it. So we've got type over here. I can go and change the font here. See, here's all my different options of fonts. And with the little arrow, I can keep coming down and down and down. Hundreds of fonts. Or I can do it over here. So Illustrator has given you lots of different ways of doing things. Notice now that I've clicked off it, this has gone away. I need to click on it again, and it comes back. Did you see that? So the arrow tool over here, it's important you think about what you're clicked on. If you're, if you're, this is a properties panel up here, which in 2018 will be over to the side, but we've got all these things coming up here. So with my text here, I've got it selected. I'm going to zoom in on it. Let's get it nice and big there. Here it is. Got it here. I might want to change that font. So that's too strong. The font family, it's good to stick with the same font family. So I might just go down to a medium. There we go. That's it, medium. We can change it. Italic over here. That's it, basically, isn't it? Now let's zoom out and look at a bigger text block with more information. So I'm zooming right out. Notice what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in over here. Now we have this one here. Let's have a look at this text box here. So I'm just going to pick it up and move it around. If I zoom out a wee bit, it's very easy for me to move text boxes around in Illustrator. This is a great thing for the layout. I can move it over here, move it around. Obviously, that's pretty easy. Um, not only that, though, I'm coming back up to the arrow tool. I can turn it around like this. Okay. And there's a few other things I can do as well. But let's look at some things here. When, we, when I'm selected on this, I've got some other options up here. So in paragraphing, this is called justified. I might justify the text like that. Justify with the bottom line in the middle. Notice the change there. Or justify um, with the last line aligned right. So they are good things to notice. As a designer, always think about this, how you're going to justify your text or how you're going to align your text. You can align right. This is a very um, infrequently used but excellent option for a design is to align right. Aligning center is used by lots of people and align left is the most common reading one. But we've got all these options over here of course. So that's almost like Microsoft Word or very simple design. But let's go for a heading and look at some fancy, a little bit more fancy now. So we're looking at fonts now. Let's look at this create outlines idea here. See that create outline? I'm going to come up here and we're going to come back to that lorem ipsum. Let's go and grab that and bring that into here. And I want to show you something else. So I'm going to pull that over here. Now with text in Illustrator. We can have it like this, where it's very easy for us to change all these fonts on it down here. Now here's a cool thing. We're going to come in and you've learned about kerning, but there's a little key here I'm going to show you with kerning. You can bring your kerning in by using Alt 
and the little arrow key. Now I'm just going to quickly draw the arrow here. Good to show you again how we can draw things in Illustrator. We just go like that, and that, and that, that, and that. Nope. Okay, so I've got that there. I'm going to pull that around the other way. That here. So I'm, I'm looking for this Alt plus this tool in um, on your keyboard. Now see this here, notice what I'm doing over here, this is basically how we use the colors, I'm going to come and talk to you about, about this a bit later on, but I'm making that button there nice and thick, and that is actually what the button should look like on your toolbox. So we're going to use those two ones, these two keys here, we're going to use Alt, and I might see what I'm doing here with the box, I'm going to draw a box around that Alt, so you know these are uh, buttons, so we need to use that one, and I just copied that and I'm going to put that there. We're going to use those two buttons. This is an excellent tool for you guys to use to bring in the kerning. Now, in terms of the letting, we do the other way. We, we very similar again, but we're going to switch now and use Alt plus the arrow that goes down. Now just watch how quickly and cool easy it is to draw change things around. I'm going to take that there. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to group them together. See this group here? And notice the keyboard shortcut, Control G. So Control G, I've just got that and I can move it down here now. And now I'm going to move it around. Uh, I'm going to copy it and bring it down here. And then I want it that way around. So I'm going to hold down shift and that constrains it to 45 degrees each time so we go in here hold down shift here and then we get it straight there we go that's it there so to get the letting we want to go down or an up like that so I'm going to now copy these boxes across again as well bring that down into here and do the other one here. So you just do things nice and quickly for a start and then later on you work on how you're going to change. Now I want to change those things around and show you how this works. So I'm going to be a wee bit fancy now. So what I'm going to do is take this text here and can create outline. So as I copy that and I move it over here, I want to go up here and now watch what I do with this text here. I'm going to move it right away pull it right off to the side okay because I don't really need it there I'm going to pull this one over to here and now I'm going to do something different now as I come in here let me just show you how that kerning works so I come in here and I have this let's say I want this um, this E here see the E on the letting uh, no let me do it with the K here the K and the E I'm going to pull it in closer watch what I do see what's happening I'm pulling it in nice and close, and if I wanted to, you get a cool effect, just do that. I pulled it in too close. Oh no, that's too close. So I'm just using keyboard shortcuts very quickly. Maybe the space between these two, between the G and the A here, I want that a bit bigger. I think it's too close. I'm going to move it apart. Very nice, isn't it? Now, almost always in most fonts, there's too much letting. So I'm going to pull the letting in. Now letting, remember, is the space between lines, so I'm going to pull it in this way. Come up like that. Notice how it's coming in. And I want to pull this kerning one right up underneath the other one. I can do that nice and easily there. Okay, see what I did there? So that's using those keyboard shortcuts, but there's another way to do this. Illustrator has different ways of doing things. So now I'm going to create outlines. So notice what I do now. I go up to type here. And I come down to create outlines, Sh keyboard shortcut, shift, control, and O, but just do that. Now see what's happened, see that difference there? So here it's a text that I can type with, and now basically I make it into artwork. Remember this, type, create outlines. And now it's very different. So let's look at those, come out and check the difference. So here's our um, other lorem ipsum and the kerning over here, let's look at the two of them side by side. If I now zoom in between the two of them, 
You'll see they look the same here, but they are not the same. If I go up to View and I go Outline, see the difference? This one over here has now become Vector. So this is a vector-based image now, and all of these things here, and if I go into the Direct Selection tool, you will see what happens. Notice that? that every single curve has been plotted. And this is a very, very cool thing for us because it means we can do much more artistic things with this text now. So as I come back up here, I've got my text here. And then over here, this is how we type with it normally. It's got a bounding box. It's different. Notice how the bounding box now is right on the edge of it. This is very helpful for aligning text as well. So I'm going to change my view back to the normal view. They look the same. Remember, it's not the same. So now I have this text, I can move it around like that, but I might not want to do that. So what I'm going to do now is ungroup. Control Shift G is ungroup. So object, ungroup, see that? That's where I am. And now I can click on an individual letter, see that M? And I might move that up, or I can move it away, or I can change it, I can make it thinner. I can do lots of things now with this text. I can make this eye much bigger. Remember again, when you've got these, when you've got your, I'm going to zoom in here. Notice what I did there, is I pulled that text from here. That constrains the scale, because you have to be very careful when you're constraining things that you're not changing it too much. So I could make that bigger if I wanted to. Um, I could select the whole text. So I've gone back and selecting everything again. I'm Control G. Now I might want to turn it around. I can do that. I can do anything I want. Okay. So we've got lots of things going on here. Now let's come and look at the colors very briefly. So down here, because colors are obviously pretty cool. This down here is the inside color and the outside color. So if we go to the view again, outline, we'll notice that there's an outline and there's nothing on the inside. See here, there's nothing. We switch them around, still looks like nothing, but if I change here, it's gone that way. See what's happened? Now let's say I want to fill that color. So I've got that and I'm going to fill it with yellow. Now I've made yellow on the inside color. Now the stroke on the outside, if we come and zoom in here, see the stroke on the outside? Maybe I want that a bit bigger. I'm going to change that up to two point. Didn't work because I wasn't clicked on it. Now we change it up to two point. See it become thicker? or five point, or you can change that size to whatever you want. Maybe I want to, there's a cool thing here where we can change the look on the outside. Now I might change it to that. I always quite like this rough look. And let's check that out. So I've just changed it to that. It's a big difference, isn't it? Now I think that's too big, that outline. So I'm going to change it down to 0.5. That's better. So there's an option there. So there's that's one thing. Another thing we could do is I might just undo that a wee bit. Come back to solid color. Think it's too thick. Two point one point. Now let's say I wanted two different colors. So I want that outline to be. I'm going to go yellow, red. We don't need to see that. I'm going to change to red on the outside. See that? Now what I also want. Let's say for example I also want. A black outline around that because yellow and red's often hard to see. So let's just copy that again. Now I have another one. Now I'm going to make that outline black and I'm going to make it much thicker. So let me make that like five point. Now I've got that. Now I want that to be behind the other one. Now if you were using Photoshop or some other software, you'd have to be using layers, but we're not going to use layers here. We're going to use grouping. So see this arrange tool? I'm going to use that. I want you to watch this carefully. Arrange, bring to front. Look at the keyboard shortcut because you use this a lot. Control and the bracket. Bring it to the front. Do I want it at the front? No, I want it behind it. So let's go object, arrange, send to back. Ah, that's what I want. Now I want these two to be aligned, exactly aligned though. So that's not quite good enough. So what I'm going to do is just come in and make sure I've got both of them selected. Both the text box selected. Now I don't want these other text boxes. I'm going to delete them. Hold shift and get rid of the other delete boxes. Now both there. Now remember my align tool over here. 
I'm going to horizontally align here and here and now they're exactly the same. I press control group and they are now exactly the same but there's actually two images in here. If we come and zoom in we're going to see what that looks like. See that? So we've got three colors. Now I could keep going and keep going and keep going couldn't I? But that's one thing you'd have to do with our assignment was to replicate this 1903 so that would be one of the things we would do because when we look at the 1903 we'd have this here wouldn't we we've got the three colors this orange white and black now this is a good example right here of what vector is this is a raster based image this is how Photoshop works so when we zoom in you notice what's happening we zoom in and it pixelates like that if you notice that now if I zoom right out let's zoom in on this letting and see what happens it's perfect you see that absolutely perfect let's zoom right in perfect it's a mathematical formula so it's always perfect now what happens when we zoom way out the same thing so that means when we're designing something this is very important because we can design things in terms of different scales it's scalable now I just want to finish with one more thing um, one very cool thing to show you so you can make the text and a picture appear behind it which is very cool so I'm going to show you that so we're going to place and then I'm going to find my document so let's say I want this wooden background that's interesting see this image that's going to pop up here I'm going to drop the image on here now what I want to use is use that wood texture there so this is where you'd use Photoshop to manipulate this image but I've got my image here that I want here and then I'm going to remember I'm going to bring that to the front so I'm control shift bracket to bring it to the front I'm going to put this text over the top of here now all I need to do now is select that and sit and shift and select the other thing and go to object clipping mask make bang see that there see the clipping mask now has the texture of the wood that was behind it can you see that in there see the wood texture behind it immediately come in and I've done that um, so let's just go through that I'm going to undo that again and show you so I have those two things there let's come back again and look at that so before I start to get my image there I'm just going file and place the image and then I've got my text which must be in front of it now maybe I want to make that text bigger so I'm going to put that underneath I want the mask to be all capitals um, and I want the whole thing centered so remember with my paragraph over here and I'm going to come in and center that I want the mask to be quite a bit bigger than the other text I'm going to change the point size up here so I want it even bigger than that I'm going to just click it in myself and make it 100 now notice that the bounding box has gone red because it's too big I'm going to make it bigger here and it's sitting underneath somewhere see it there there it is now obviously this letting now is far too big so I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to alt Alt and arrow and bring that up nice and tight in there I want it really tight actually right in there there we go that's nice let's put that there now last time just as I showed you before I had that wood let's see what it looks like with this fruit over it so I go with that and that select them both object clipping mask make or control 7 and look at that I've got the food over it now so we come in and check here here it is here now one thing that I find with students when they do this they often make a mistake this is now quite hard to see so it really needs a, an outline so I'm going to create outlines with this so I come down here and I create my outline see there's an outline immediately on it now let's make that see the outline down here I just want that black I need to find my swatches window see the swatches have gone I need my colors back here they are I'm gonna make that black and I want a nice thick black so I'm going to make sure I'm selected on it and that'll do me and that's good so there I've got my clipping mask there and that's going to look nice and strong on there so there's an example of doing something like that now this is all at this stage we're just showing you a few things now hopefully you've noticed or you're noticing something in here that this is very very ugly so now we have all these ideas now the next 
video I'll show you how we can make this nice and we'll start to look at some design things so hopefully immediately you're saying we've got a whole lot of problem here we've got heaps of stuff on here it's very very ugly some stuff's angled we've got a very strong image over here with the clipping mask um, and we've got a lot of different things going on visually this is a very poor design so we're going to come back and make it look good but that's our next exercise have a practice with those tools just get used to using them don't worry about making something beautiful just yet just practice using them good luck